What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today we're going to be talking about the used car market. Now it's been about 30 days since we made our last video and we wanted to give you guys an update of currently what's going on in the market, what's happening with repos, also what's happening with the new car prices along with financing and some other things you guys need to know about. But before I do, if you can do me a huge favor and gently squeeze the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it helps me find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing. We do post two times a week. I try to do three, but it's too crazy, so we're gonna keep with two. Also, follow us on Instagram, at Lucky Lopez, and let's get into the video. So the last 30 days have been an absolute roller coaster, not only for my channel, but the actual automotive market. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'm an automotive expert. I've been in the car business for over 20 years, and the whole purpose of this channel is to be transparent about the automotive industry, to show you everything from a dealer's perspective as well as a consumer's perspective, and hopefully share that information. And one of the things I love is putting comments down in the section below. It lets me know currently what's going on in your market. So if your market is still priced high and cars are expensive, put it down there. If they're cheaper, please share it. If you have any input, we want to share as much information as we can to help educate the group. Now, the cool thing is, if your opinion is different from mine, that's okay. We can still be friends. But the whole purpose is to share information on this channel. So the last video, we were talking about how the repo market is blowing up, how there's more and more repos coming in, and those were the, some of the first cracks in the foundation starting to show with the automotive uh, bubble. And that video right there got us on the map of a lot of major news networks. We did that featured article in Barron's, which got us nationwide coverage, which we've gotten many interviews out of that. I'm actually getting ready to fly to New York next week to do a, a interview on a major news network as well as Los Angeles. I'm gonna be flying there too to do another one. And so that video really turned the tide and let people know that you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There is an automotive bubble that is happening and what some of the telltale signs are. Now, you gotta remember, we reported on that almost three and a half months ago. So whatever we talked about back then is barely showing up today. Remember this, the whole time we're talking about this, everything I talk about today is coming in 60 to 90 day cycles because that's what how long it takes to go from the dealer side to the retail consumer side. So keep that in mind. So next thing we're gonna talk about that you guys need to know about is what's called no sales. Now, as a dealer, when we go to the auction, they line up every car and you basically run through the auction and you have to bid on these vehicles. Now, let's say there's a thousand vehicles going this week. A thousand run, let's say 500 of those are what's called no sales. So 500 of those vehicles did not reach the reserve of what the bank thought it was worth. So what happens to those 500 vehicles? Well, those 500 vehicles go into next week. So now you have, let's say 800 cars that are coming in from new repos that compile in, new repos, new trades, and then you add those 500 cars on top of that. Now you're at 1,300 vehicles running this week. So now you're gonna run these 1,300 vehicles, and let's say once again, 600 or maybe 500 of these are no sales. Those go right back into the market and they just keep adding on. So this starts to affect supply and demand, which is the two fundamentals of things either decreasing price or raising price. But now the demand in the retail market is dying because people don't have the capital to buy the cars. People don't wanna overpay. People are sick of overpaying for cars. So now people have seen the cracks in the foundation, they're waiting, they're being patient and it's scaring the hell out of dealers, especially franchise stores, which I'll go into here a little bit later. So now all these no sales are piling up more and more and more, and as these repos keep piling in, the same cars keep going through. I've been trying to buy a Jeep Wrangler for a friend of mine for the last two months. Now, I won't say the name of the bank, but they have one that's for sale. I've bid $25,000 on it seven times, and they keep telling me no, it's worth 30, and I show them the book, it's worth 25, I'm only gonna pay you 25, I'm not gonna go a dollar over what it's worth. They're gonna keep running it. This week, I am not gonna bid on that car. I don't care if it, if it runs for 20,000. I want them to be scared because I know what's gonna happen. That it's gonna run, it's gonna go for 20,000, maybe 22,000, and they're gonna get scared. They're seeing that the market is dipping and they're probably gonna let it go. And that's what we're waiting for, is the greed to be over with. These banks, you gotta remember, they loaned so much money on these cars during the pandemic. They were doing 130, 160% of LTV. So now 
That $30,000 Jeep they want, they probably owe $35,000, maybe $40,000 to the bank, but I'm trying to buy it at a wholesale for $25,000. So that bank is left with that deficiency amount. And this is what's gonna scare the banks is when they keep taking these hits like that, where they have to absorb that amount of loss, they're gonna stop lending. So as of right now, we're starting to see that tide turn. The banks have to let these cars go. They can't just keep letting them pile up and pile up. A lot of the, the storage lots I took you guys to in my other videos and some of the repo yards, they're full. They can't hold any more cars. And they are repoing cars every single day. And it's gonna continue like this for the next several months. Now, as these deficiencies build, this is gonna lead us to the next thing that's gonna start changing the car market, which is the lending aspect. And that's one of the big things I wanna talk about as well. So we talked about deficiencies, about how every time they sell a car at the auction, they sell it for less money than what they actually uh, lent out on it. They're gonna have to eat those deficiencies. Well, every month, every quarter, every year, the banks have to report that to whoever they get their money from, whether it's the government, whether it's another bank, or private investors. And so if you're lending money and you're seeing a bank take massive losses one after another after another, you're probably gonna wanna put in some sort of restrictions or something to limit the amount of loss. And that's where it's gonna really affect the car market. As these banks start taking these major hit and deficiencies, they're gonna start implementing different rules. Now, some of these rules may affect the consumers, but most of these are gonna affect the dealers, and this is how it's gonna affect you as a consumer. So, as these banks start to lose money, they're gonna try to figure out how can we get this money back. So the first thing they do is they start charging dealers that sold them deals. Now as a dealer, you sign a contract, if you have any type of issues or you lied on a contract, you by law have to buy that contract back from the bank. So a lot of these uh, banks, as they start having these major defaults, they're gonna try to peddle that off to anybody, whether it's franchise stores or independents. So they may say, hey, you know what? We gave you $30,000 for this Tahoe, and you said that it had leather seats and running boards and a sunroof. We don't see a sunroof, we don't see leather seats, we don't see running boards. We need a check for $1,200 or we're gonna sue you. And I'm not even joking, this is what happens when the market turns. I've already talked to several dealers and they're already starting to get these letters, not only from subprime lenders, but also prime lenders. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, a lot of the credit unions. This is how they start mitigating the risk because they know what's happening and they start to see this. Now, as a person, you're like, well, that's the dealers. Let them pay for it. Here's the problem. When you're the consumer, my job as a dealer is to sell you a car. But what happens is as these banks start taking these massive deficiencies, they get so scared, they raise what's called a bank fee. A bank fee is what they charge me as the dealer to finance you, the consumer. So let's say you have really bad credit and you wanna buy like this $15,000 car. Now the bank's gonna look at you and be like, well, this guy, he's got bad credit, short job time. We're gonna charge you $1,500 to accept the deal. So you, the consumer, your loan is still worth $15,000. But for me, I don't get a check for 15, I get a check for 14, or. Yeah, 14.5 or 13.5, and that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna lose that money because I have to pay the bank to take the risk on that particular deal. Now, here's the problem. When people start complaining like, well, I want the price to go down. I want the dealer to work a deal with me. When you have bad credit or when the banks are charging us dealers a lot of fees, we can't lower the price because they come after us for even more money. So if dealers are overpaying, which they are right now, which we'll go into here in a minute, and the banks are charging more fees, and the banks, the dealership literally gets to eat this much of profit, there's no way we can lower the price two, $3,000 to accommodate you. That's what starts a lot of fights. So some dealers, yes, they're overcharging, and yes, they're asking a lot of money, but it's probably because they overpaid for the car, they over reconned it, and now they have the bank wanting to squeeze an extra two, three thousand dollars out of them, and they have no, they have this much money. They're gonna make like 800, 900 bucks on the deal, and you're wanting three thousand dollars off, and they can't do it. You as the consumer get mad, the dealer gets upset because they can't get rid of this vehicle, and that's how the cycle starts. Now, that's what's gonna happen with the banks and with the lending. Another big thing that we're seeing problems with are dealers. 
I'm so sick of dealers. I can't get cars. Everything is too expensive. There's no good deals. The only reason cars are overpriced at the auction is because you guys are too stupid and you keep overpaying. It's very rarely I get mad, but when I go to the auction and I hear these people crying and complaining and I can't get a good deal, and then turn around and drop three grand over MSR to get not even like a really fancy car or something really rare, a Hyundai. I will never in my life pay three grand over MMR, which is wholesale or market value for an actual Hyundai. But I see these dealers doing it. And the worst thing is they don't have any money. They're all using lines of credit and it's costing them thousands of dollars and they don't even realize it. As these dealers buy these cars, like I said, they pay too much for them. Then they have to fix them so they over recon them. And then you add not only the bank fees what the banks charge, now you gotta add what's called the flooring fee. This is what their lines of credit charge them. You know, they're paying 10, 15, 20% on top of that. So the piece of the pie is cut up so small when you're a dealer and you're, you're eating off a very small amount. So if you're not running a finely tuned ship, you don't get cars back a book and you keep overpaying for stuff, that's why a lot of these dealers are gonna be gone in the next three to six months because when this market drops and you guys have AFC, Next Gear, or one of these other foreign companies, don't be surprised that when they call you and they say, hey, you know what? We just ran all the books on your cars and we noticed that the market dropped. So 20% of your vehicle value is no longer there, which has already happened. If you rerun your books on your cars, you'll see this. They're gonna tell you, hey, you know what? Um, on your million dollar line, we're gonna need you to uh, write us a check for $200,000. We need it by Friday, thanks. That's it. So now dealers are gonna be frantic trying to come up with $200,000 to pay down their flooring line so their collateralized debt is not out of whack. And what most dealers are gonna do is they're gonna panic because they don't have money. 99% of dealers don't have a dollar to their name. They're all credit. So they're gonna take these cars and they're gonna take them to the auction. And guess what's waiting at the auction? All the no sales and all the repos. So now you add the third one, which is all dealer sales. So now you have the trifecta of boneheads that are recycling cars over and over again. You have the cars that are no sales that keep running that, that want too much money for them. Then you're gonna add dealers that are gonna want, want too much money for their cars because they overbought them, they over recon them. And then you got the repos coming in where they still think they're worth a bunch of money and they want all the money for them. And so that is literally gonna be the perfect storm to adding too much supply to the market. And this is what's gonna make it not crash, but correct, about 20% is what I'm guessing. So we're from where we started about three or four months ago till today, we're around six, 7% down. So we got another 10 to 15% to go, but I think it's gonna go even further. We might even get in the 25 to 30% range by the end of the second quarter of 2023, which is scary because in the scheme of things, it doesn't seem like that much. But if you're a dealership and you have 150 cars and your average car is $30,000, you're about to lose $2,500 per car. And that's gonna be very scary. That is all your profit. So what does this mean for consumers and what does this mean for dealers? As a consumer, be patient. Good deals are coming. As a dealer, stop being stupid. Sell your damn cars. You can move metal. I always say the same thing over and over again. You can replace the car, but you can't replace the customer. Go get another damn car. Sell that car. There's a bunch of them at the auction. You guys see them, I see them. This is just the way it is. Move those cars. Don't sit on anything longer than 60 days because dealers have learned a very bad trait and especially you new dealers, listen to this. There has never been a time in history where cars have appreciated. This is the only time ever in history used cars have appreciated. This has taught so many new dealers bad habits. Traditionally, as a dealer, we need to get rid of our cars every 60 days. If it sits on our lot for too long, get rid of it. Take it back to the auction, sell it. Those good principles and things that we did to make sure that we don't get too much debt in our flooring and we don't lose too much uh, money on a vehicle, those principles are gone because they weren't forced to sell them. Because back in the day, when you bought a car, you bought it at the peak and it's working its way down because the book always goes down. It doesn't go back up. This, this short time, the book stayed the same or actually went up. So a lot of these dealers, of gotten in really bad habits of holding inventory. So that's why if you look at car gurus and some of these other ones, they got cars that have been there for over 100 days and they don't even care. 
Where if traditionally, if I had a car for over 100 days, I'd be losing my mind. I'd be taking that shit to the auction trying to get rid of it. But these guys are boneheads. They have no idea. They're like, well, I can't replace it. I can't get another one. I'm going to keep it and hold on to it. Those that are left holding the bag are going to be the ones basically holding that money bag and sinking to the bottom of the ocean and drowning when this market drops out. But uh, anyways, um, once again, please put in the comments section below what you feel and what you see in your market. Like I said, this page or this group is all about transparency, so I'd love to hear from you guys what's currently going on in your market. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. So I'm thinking about getting into the car business again. As I'm watching the market drop, I know a lot of these banks are not gonna be lending and I wanna jump in and I wanna do buy here, pay here because there's gonna be a huge market for that. So if there's any hedge funds watching, if you guys got five to $10 million that you guys wanna invest with me and do some paper, I have a huge plan for it. Message me, my email's in the description below or if you guys wanna hit me up on Instagram, either one. Uh, it's about time I wanna open up my own bank because the market's gonna change. A lot of these guys don't know how to buy cars or write paper and I am literally salivating at the idea because watching these guys burn, Carvana about to explode, Vroom is pretty much dead, and a lot of these big franchise stores are not gonna be selling the used cars once the new inventory comes in, which may be about a year before the new cars catch up, but nobody's gonna be overpaying for some of these used cars here very shortly. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash the like button, also subscribe. Once again, follow us on Instagram, at Lucky Lopez, and we'll see you next video.